Good evening. Transport Minister Fiki Lembalula has called on those tasked with resolving the ETEL saga to take the issue seriously. This follows a spat between Finance Minister Tito Mboweni and Gauteng Premier David Makura on Twitter, which has led to President Cyril Ramaphosa rebuking the two in a statement. Mboweni supports ETOLs while Makura wants it scrapped. Mbalula, Mboweni and Makura have been tasked with coming up with a solution to resolve the impasse. Mbalula was critical in his reaction to the disagreement between Mboweni and Makura. It is not upon me to reprimand anyone on Twitter. I'm on Twitter myself. But uh, the president has spoken. We are not a banana republic. We are not a Mickey Mouse state. We are a democratic state accountable to the people of the republic. We've got to take issues seriously and address them as agreed. And I'm looking forward now to leading that process with my colleagues and uh, finalize within the time frames that have been set by the president. Mbalula was speaking to the media the roadblock at Marine Hill Toll Plaza. The operation is aimed at highlighting road safety at the end of the school holidays. Law enforcement agencies are out in full force. This was one of three roadblocks held on the entry between Devon and Johannesburg. Officers checked for roadworthiness of vehicle and licenses. Motorists say they support regular checkpoints. It's better to keep our old safe to, during the traveling seasons and especially on the roads, but it must be 24 7. I wish all the drivers must behave on the road, not to drink and drive. We are saving your lives because if this car crashes, no one will be paid. More than 1,300 cars an hour were passing through the toll plaza as holiday makers. We're heading home. Nundi Khatebe, SAPC News, Devon. President Cyril Ramaphosa has tasked the finance and transport ministers to find a way to deal with the impasse over ETOLs. Wayne Duvenage from Arta joins me via Skype for more on this. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News tonight. What do you make of this? Well, I think it's an indication of how government is suffering from a crisis of legitimacy on a matter that has failed for a number of years now. Uh, and then to still be having this spat in the social media space between uh, people at the executive and the high le highest levels of government uh, really is quite embarrassing. What, what we do want now is for government to resolve this matter once and for all. It's been going on for far too long. Uh, the sad thing that is missing is civil society. Uh, so we hear the uh, president calling for the ministers to come up with a solution, uh, but we have been giving solutions. We have been researching this issue for a long time. We know why it's failed. So we look forward to engaging with them as well. They've indicated that there uh, should be some engagement, but when that will happen uh, remains to be seen. Okay, we're in the final and fiscal, financial and fiscal commission, my apologies, is reported to have advised Treasury to start looking for new revenue, revenue streams because local government is simply not making enough money, allegedly because of things like users not paying for ETOLs and people not paying uh, certain taxes. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, when you have very focused tax revolts like an ETOL one because the scheme requires public buy-in and they never got that, it also requires the need to be efficient. It must be a rational scheme. So they've lost the plot there. Uh, yes, I agree with the Fiscal Framework Commission. They need to, a government needs to find an alternative. And there are alternatives, because you must remember, Sanro has over 18,000 kilometers of roads that are not tolled, and those are being financed through government grants, allocations from Treasury, fuel levies, and so forth. So there are alternatives. Uh, what they need to do uh, on, on other areas of non-payment, well, yeah, I mean, user pays has to apply if you don't pay for electricity, you switch electricity off. The problem is they've allowed that to go on for far too long and they've got, uh, they've got to deal with that. But, so there are different scenarios for, for different services provided. Roads have been funded through allocations from Treasury for many years, and I think that's the best way to do it. Because on top of, of the finance cost, the tolling, the e-tolling uh, system has another 1.6 billion rand administration fees in the contract of ETC, whereas the allocations from Treasury and the fuel levy have a zero administration fee. So it makes sense to move away from this costly uh, uh, and failed ETOL scheme where only 20% of the public are participating, the other 80% aren't. 
It seems as though from some reports that we're seeing, e-tolls are not really going to go away. Finance Minister Tito Mboweni has been quite clear when he keeps on saying South Africans need to pay what's due. Um, there's a culture of non-payment that's not good. So perhaps my question to you would be, how do you decide what's a valid form of civil disobedience? When are you not going to pay for goods and services? And is there not the potential for that to then spiral out and people to say, I don't feel like paying for this, so I'm not going to do it? No, no, not at all. I think this is a very clear one. Uh, the, the, the legal case is still underway. And if they lose the legal case, uh, which is highly likely because they lost it in the Western Cape in all three levels of the courts, and that will apply here. So what government needs to do is apply its mind. A, it's lost the people on this. B, it's a very expensive scheme. C, the, uh, the contracts have already expired, so they don't have to worry about contractual obligations. And uh, if you if you just apply rationality, you would pull the plug on a scheme that has failed. So it's very very easy for Tito Boweni to say, no, well, we're just going to carry on. The problem is it's not working. They're not even covering the costs now that uh, for the uh, for the administration of the scheme. So you know, it doesn't help to try and force a square peg into a round hole. It isn't going to happen. Government needs to come to its senses. The public have spoken on this matter. They did not consult the public and they put in the most irrational scheme and they had to pay the price now. There are reports that um, the Department of Transport is going to take, I think it's two billion rand that was meant for Prasa and um, to bail out Sanral, um, which operates the e-tolls. And so that seems to say, no matter what the president is saying and no matter what um, the discussions are, e-tolls are here to stay and there's basically nothing South Africans can do about it. Well, details aren't here to stay. You know, it's like, as I've said before, it's like having a party and the lights are on, but there's no one on the dance floor. They can say for as long as they like, details are here to stay. But if they cannot collect the money due for the purpose, which is to finance the bonds, then details are not here to stay. So government may think they're here to stay because the lights are on and the, and the counter is clicking over every time a car goes under. But if the people aren't paying, then details has failed. So they cannot keep saying that. They need to come to their senses. The scheme has failed. Find an alternative. Now, the alternatives need to come from taxation. You must remember, um, you and I drive on Gauteng's roads and we pay our fuel levies and our taxes. There are no tolls in Cape Town, no tolls in Durban, no tolls in any other urban in infrastructure. So who's paying for their roads? Who's paying for their infrastructure? This is the economic powerhouse of the country. If this uh, province needs eight-lane highways, then give it to them because the more productive cutting is, the more money the country makes. So it really doesn't make sense to keep flogging this horse when it uh, really isn't alive anymore. Mm -hmm. how, how do you participate in the type of discussions that are taking place now? How do you engage with, say, the transport department over an issue like this or even with um, the Department of Finance? written to the ministers of transport by the way there's been seven of them since we objected to the schemes uh, back in the days when uh, when i think it was jeffrey debe who made the decision and signed it off in a hurry seven transport ministers have received our letters to engage we have studied this the same uh, the same technology fails in certain contexts and it, and it's and it's successful in others this scheme had all the hallmarks of failure um, right back in 2014, when they reached a maximum of 40% compliance for a scheme, they said they would get 93% compliance, and then it's deteriorated now since then to 20%. So how, how else, other than barging into their offices, we can write a civil society, we can request meetings, but if they don't want to meet, well, then they must just continue to try and force the scheme onto the people. But the people have spoken on this matter. And uh, we wait. Uh, I think this time around, you had a government that has been that has been quite obstructive in the past. I think Cyril Ramaphosa's government and Minister Fikile Belula, Belula and Tito Mbueni will probably have the appetites to meet with civil society once they hear what the real issues are, what the solutions are from our point of view. I think they might have an appetite. But until then, you know, they, uh, Tito Mbueni can carry on singing from the rooftops that he tells us to stay, I don't think he actually quite understands what he means when he says that. Thanks so much for your time. Wayne Duvenage, Outer CEO, joining us via Skype to discuss this issue around e-tolls. Now, the annual Southern African Transport